our solar system is a lovely place. If you want to travel around the Solar System National Park, why don't visit Jupiter? Yeah, if Earth is a grape, Jupiter is a basketball. People say it's basically a failed star that didn't quite make the cut at the gym, but that's just not the case. Being a brown dwarf is not that easy. If you find 10 more Jupiters and merge them together, you can create a brown dwarf. If you have 60 more Jupiters, you can create a star. However, Jupiter is still the biggest object in the solar system, except the Sun. It spins so fast that a day there is only 10 hours long, and it's so heavy, it doesn't just orbit the Sun, it actually pulls the Sun, causing it to wobble. And hey, hey Aerith, how far is you from planet Jupiter? To put that in perspective, if you walked there, it would take you 20,000 years. But we have a car, so buckle up, it's gonna be a long ride. All right, let's go. Firstly, although the fastest production cars nowadays can reach top speed of around 300 miles per hour, which is 139 meters per second, sure, very fast, but that's still nothing in the solar system. Take 90377 Sedna, for example. It is one of the dwarf planet in the outermost reaches of the solar system, orbiting the Sun far beyond the orbit of Neptune. So Sedna has a very slow orbit. It takes 11,400 years to complete a single orbit around the Sun, but still it is running at 375 meters per second, even at its farthest. And at 139 meters per second, our car can only run 12,000 kilometers a day. So by the time when arriving the moon, it would take 32 days. And if you do this in 4 billion years ago, you would arrive on the day two because the moon was much more closer to the earth. This sounds not much, but don't be fooled by the visualization images of the solar system. The Earth-Moon system is very empty, and the orbits between the planets is much, much, much more empty. So after saying goodbye to the Moon, move on again. You look out the window expecting to see the next planet, but all you see is darkness. To get to our next rest stop, Mars, we need to cover a minimum distance of 54.6 million kilometers, and that's if we are lucky and the planets are aligned perfectly. The solar system is not a string, it is a plate, so if you want to travel around the solar system, don't expect going a straight line, just prepare for 57 annoying U-turns. At our super-fast car speed, this leg of the trip isn't going to take days or weeks, it's going to take 12 and a half years. Sounds fine, but we are not even close. You see, Mars and Jupiter are neighbors. Or are they? Yes, they are, but you might overestimate their relationship because these two planets are really, really far from each other compared to inner solar system planets. Leaving Mars, we enter the famous asteroid belt. Now, don't expect playing a dodging game, no. But in reality, it's disappointing. It's so empty that if you stood on an asteroid, you probably wouldn't even be able to see the next one with your naked eye. Yes, there are possibly 100 million asteroids bigger than a house in the asteroid belt, but it's also more than 200 million kilometers across, so enough space for asteroids to hold parties, don't worry. Well, maybe except Ceres. Ceres is the boss of the belt, making up a third of the belt's total mass, but that's not important anyway. And finally, you would arrive Jupiter. Although it is a total journey of roughly 150 years, still it's a good destination, if you ignore all the lethal doses of radiation and temperature at negative 110 degrees Celsius. Thanks for watching, and subscribe to Jupiter!